Hello, dirt and dents, and welcome to YouTube. Wait, no, that's not right. Hello, YouTube, welcome to dirt and dents. Now, this is episode 11, which we're starting to fit out the canopy on the Triton, ready for our Fraser troop, which is in five weeks. So, we'll run the opener and we'll jump straight into it. current canopy floor setup. Now you can see that I've got some pine bearers that I've just made into a bit of a subfloor. Now the reason we got the subfloor is if we have a look on the lip of the canopy door to the floor is quite a big drop. It's about 90 mil because that's about uh, I think it's 4590 pine. So we had to step it up so when we put a draw slide in it's not going to be able to mount straight to the floor because if we mount it and try and draw it out it's just going to hit the bottom of the canopy which is not ideal so we put these bearers in and on the sides of the walls i've done double on both sides and that's just to really strengthen it up um, and that's a big key point for these sort of imported canopies rather than hand-built canopies is that they use the aluminium sheet as the floor so it's not the most strongest when it comes to weight bearing or holding load um, where a lot of the custom made canopies have a floor that's built into it with that seal. So that's just a key thing to, if you get one of these imported canopies like I do, you will have to build a subfloor and it also strengthens the hell out of it for mounting stuff too. Um, I know that I've mounted the floor, but that's because the floor has been liquid nailed into this bearer and then the weight too. So there's a couple of factors to play. So, now that these bearers are in, they're all liquid nailed in, they've been in for a while, because I've had this kind of for a while. Um, we'll go and put the original floor back on top here. And what that was, it was 12 mil pine, sorry, not pine, chipboard. Um, and then I had marine carpet on top of it to sort of seal it and give it a protection on top. And it looked a lot nicer too. So what we'll do is we'll go and throw them back in and we'll have a look at how it looks with the carpet floor on. So here's our floorboard, call it a floorboard, uh, that I originally used. So as you can see, it's just 12 mil ply with some carpet, marine carpet, I went black, hide some of the dirt when it gets in there. Now this might look a bit funky for now, but it'll make sense once it's back in there. So we've got that for this side and then around the back on the other side, we have that side. Now you're probably wondering what these notches here and here are for. And the side notches are so it fits snug against the wall around the uprights on the supports. And these bigger ones here match here too. So for the whale tail lock, it will slide down. It's a bit hard to see on the camera. But there we go, it's better. Uh, these whale tails fold down like that which clips in behind here and creates that dust seal around the edge here. We'll put this first board in, screw it all down, and I've got to give it a back in because it's filthy. It might be hard to turn camera, but it is utterly filthy from when I took it out. There's like aluminium shavings, there's wood shavings, there's dirt still in there from the big trip I did with it a few years ago, but we'll clean that later. So let's get stuck into it.
So now we've got the floor for the canopy all in. We are gonna go jump in the car. We're gonna go shoot up to the local wave bridge and we will chuck the car on the wave bridge to find out how much we weigh empty without the canopy full because then that gives us a base level to when we can start filling stuff and how much we can fill into the canopy because our GVM or our gross vehicle mass is very, very important. Uh, if you're not too sure what a GVM is or you've never heard of it before, it is the amount of weight the car can weigh all together with everything packed in. So the Triton here is 2.7 GVM. So it means that with me in the car, the dog in the car packed ready on our trip for Fraser, we can only weigh anything under 2.7. So we'll go weigh on the weigh bridge and that gives us a base point for the fit out of the canopy. So let's jump in the car and we'll shoot down now. Alright, so we just got in here to Packenham Weigh Bridge, which is just out in Officer. I say Packenham, but it's Officer. So we've thrown the car onto the Weigh Bridge, so I've just got to pay for the Weigh Bridge. $40? It's a bit crazy. Anyway, I need it. So, front R, A, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Sway looks opening a turn. Yes, yes, yes. Alright. Time to pay. Anyway, everyone, have a stab. Leave it in the comments what you think the weight will be, and we'll see how close we are. One eternity later. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Come on, come on. All right. So print docket. So we're printing the docket now. And we can finally see how much we're going to weigh. Alrighty. So, gross mass vehicle total is... Hold on. Jump back in the car. Alright, so the total is 2.30 tonne. Now, I've got some crap in the back seat of my car. Um, I'm not in the car. So, we're going to deduct... 50 kilos. I'm definitely not 50 kilos. So I'm like double that plus some. So it means roughly when I'm in the car, we should have 2.35 ton to play with, which is awesome. So it means that we've got 450 kilos to load up in the canopy. Also mind you, saying that, that's not meaning we will load up 450 kilos in the canopy. It just means we have the option to. Um, but that's awesome. Anyway, so let's head home and start loading out because I've got some pretty cool bits of gear to throw in. All right, let's do it. All right, so we're back at the workshop now. And what we've thrown in is this brand new kitchen from Anaconda. It's the June brand, which is a pretty good bargain. Only costs 500 bucks. Anyway. So now that's in, you can have a quick look. We're going to put some nice dirt and dent stickers on the front there. It sits in there quite nicely. You'll notice you've got the fridge slide at the top here, which we're going to do some cool little project on. And then we've got two benches and a cook top. You can do it with one hand, which I can't. So I might do some hand levers. So pull out the drawers and screw it all in. So I've gone and screwed in the kitchen. So I've just used 50 mil batten screws or bugle head screws. And it's just gone straight to the floor and the bear is underneath. So it's bloody strong. Shake it, doesn't move. So we'll throw the fridge on next and have a look at the fridge component. And then the possible modification to the fridge tray. Alright, so excuse the darkness, but we've got the fridge in, we've got it all in the kitchen, we're just sitting just here, anyway. So now we'll flip the camera around and so you can see that the obviously the fridge is a little bit small for this kitchen fridge drawer on this top section. But 
we're going to remedy that. So we're going to slide the fridge all the way forwards, and then that leaves us a 300 mil gap at the back. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut this top fridge slide down 300 so we can make a battery tray to fit in behind the fridge and we can still use that dead space. Otherwise, I could pack like other stuff around the fridge, but I'd rather use that for battery space because otherwise I've still got to find real estate in that canopy for a battery, for the secondary battery unit. So we'll kill two birds with one stone. Anyway, we've got really one more important modification to do on this for tonight and then we'll call it a day, but let's get cracking into that next mod. So for the next final modification for the fridge for tonight, we've peeled off the sticker. There is a warning sticker that's still on the top that says, warning, remove legs before tilting back in or sliding back in. Anyway, the next important modification is we're going to go and take this very cool, very new, dirt and dent sticker. Might be a bit hard to see. And that's going to go, boom, right across there. Now, the cool thing is that if you jump onto our merch store, you too can get your hands on these dirt and dent stickers and it will take your mod to the next level. Anyway, we'll go and stick it on and see what it looks like. So the most important modification is done now. So we'll quickly flip the camera and have a look. So there it is. Dirt and dents sticker all over the kitchen table. It's not nicely. So there you go. Anyway, we'll put it away quickly. So have a look at that. Anyway, let's uh, have a spell for the night and we'll jump back into it nice and fresh in the morning. One eternity later. All right, so it's a bit later than the next morning because work commitments and having to go away for work. But anyway, I've gone and pulled out the whole fridge tray from the kitchen that's sitting just there with the battery. So we'll throw the fridge up there and then what we're planning to do is once the fridge is in, it will sit somewhere about there, maybe even here. Then we can line up and then cut down the guts here and then create a separate battery tray that will stay permanently fixed on the back corner there. Now, the reason we're putting a battery tray or cutting this down to fit the battery tray is that if I keep it on the whole fridge slide and you can slide the whole battery and fridge in and out, we're gonna have to have a whole lot of excess cable and then cable tracking to make sure that it all runs in and out smoothly and not getting jagged and cut up on bits and pieces and creating shorts and stuff like that. So I think it's gonna be easier and safer that we just create a custom tray at the back there using the fridge slide cut down three quarters so we will go and throw the fridge on and have a look at how it sits all right so we've got our fridge on the slide still now the original plan was that we we're going to put the battery which i have just here the optima was going to sit in behind here on we're going to cut it down and then mount it all up there on the back of the kitchen and it was going to sit there but working out is that the optimum battery that I do have is only 55 amp hours, which is probably not strong enough to run everything I want to run out of the canopy. So we're looking at 120 amp hour minimum battery, which really starts to limit our choices, obviously. So we could still mount a smaller battery at the back there, but if we go 120 amp hour, then it becomes a weight issue, which these fridge slides on this kitchen is only rated to 60 kilos. Now the fridge loaded is 32 kilos, which means we've only got 18 kilos, no, 28 kilos, math not good. We got 28 kilos to play with, and then 120 amp hour AGM battery generally starts at around 35 kilos and goes anywhere between 35 to 55 kilos, which knocks it straight off the fridge slide. So the next option we have is we're looking at mounting it flush on the back of the kitchen here, which means we'll just shorten our pantry depth by say 200, because rather than have a 900 pantry, which I was looking at, which will run flush with the kitchen, we might drop it down to 700 so we can fit a battery in behind there. And then we'll put a wall up, a petition wall between both sides. Anyway, 
I've got some eyelets here that I've picked up from Bunnies and some bolts. What I'm going to do is it's obviously it's a fair reach for the straps. We're going to put them in. Excuse me. We're going to put one here, the other one here, and that will basically be able to back mount our fridge from sliding forwards and backwards. So we'll quickly do that and then we'll resus the whole battery idea. So that is our back eyelets all installed, so it will slide it all out. And you can now see that it's all in, which is good. So for underneath, I've just gone and used, it's probably really hard to see because it's all black, is Allen keyed bolt and an eyelet. All right, so it's been a night since I last filmed that little bit and I really thought about the whole battery situation in the canopy. And I don't want to lose too much real estate because that's key, and then wait, anyway. So, what I've gone and done is, I went down to Battery Power Center in Dandenong, and they have helped me out, and I've picked up a Slimline AGM, 150 amp hour, it's all down here somewhere. They go 12 volt, 150 amp hour. Now, the job is we're gonna slide this pantry across 10 mil and the whole battery will slide in beside the canopy head wall and the kitchen so there's our real estate problem solved the weight issue oh, i'm not really fussed about the weight issue we've still got plenty of weight to play with in the canopy setup it just means we'll build a pantry and the drawer slide on the driver side out of aluminium to keep weight down and we'll just have to pack some up so that's it. Um, the battery weighs 46 kilos. So the fridge, the pan, oh, sorry, the fridge, the kitchen is 30 kilos each. So at 60 kilos plus this, we're at 100 kilos. So we've still got 300 kilos to play with before we hit GVM. So that's a fair bit. Anyway, let's do that quickly and we'll have a look how it's hit. So excuse the mess of the canopy floor, but we've got the battery all in. So as you can see, it's a nice tight fit in between the kitchen and the head wall, but we'll do a bit of an infill panel, probably up and around there, to put all our electronical components up the top there, like all our battery management stuff, the voltage sensitive relays, uh, maybe an inverter, and a couple of bits and pieces, or light switches and stuff like that will go up on this wall, but that's all good, because we got our battery in, nice big 150 amp hour battery which means we've got plenty of juice to draw all our electronics from so i'll go and throw this fridge in off camera and that will pretty much be it all right so the fridge is back in and installed with all the straps on now i've gone and added some little d loops here in the corner for that one which just goes around the handle and then ties that side down and then the other side, the camera back around, has the same on the other side of the kitchen. So now that we've got the battery, the kitchen, and the fridge all done in the pantry, we're pretty much ready. I keep saying pantry, but it's a kitchen. Mm. Anyway, now that we've got the kitchen, fridge, and battery all sorted, we can now move on to building a pantry for the car and then building a draw slide box for the other side to put all their tools and spare parts and stuff. And then we'll start running 12 volt accessories for the canopy like lights and the actual power for the fridge and stuff like that. Anyway, so that now that we've got all that done, that is the end of this episode. So if you like this episode, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, make sure you hit the bell to stay notified of when we have upcoming episodes and that sort of stuff. And also, if you found it really helpful, share it on your social media to all your friends and family. It would really, really appreciate it and help us out here. Anyway, we'll catch you in the next episode. Oi.